Hi guys, uh, thanks for joining us. So let's uh, let's check if everything is okay. I think everything is okay. And uh, yeah, so uh, thanks for joining us. So we have uh, Gabriel uh, Elliot. I don't know if you want us to call you uh, Elliot or if you want uh, to use. Uh, Baptiste your... is okay. Baptiste, okay, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and uh, and obviously, Costin, we just uh, talked about uh, yeah. uh, the um, what was the name of the SDK again? Xmod? No. Xmod SDK. X Xmod SDK, and that's uh, that's pretty interesting actually. Like, uh, I mean, is, I guess it's kind of like uh, we can just like stop now, but uh, it, it's pretty hard to track uh like uh what apps are doing um in general so for instance there is this sdk that you have found uh have you guys heard of any other AD sdks doing like something similar publicly or because it's obviously not necessarily necessarily like sdks but we have seen for instance like uh uh, voice over IP, like applications being rebranded uh, because they got purchased by a VC and sold to another country. Uh, so it's a bit like harder to to keep track of it. But what about SDKs? Have you seen that in uh, in many places? Or well, um, speaking from uh, from what I've seen, um, as I said, there's like uh, dozens and dozens of uh, these SDKs that people just. Uh, link into their smartphone apps for small profits like you know, 30 300 dollars per month something like this uh, from having 10,000 users is quite possible there so again there's dozens and dozens of these sdks and uh, it's uh, probably quite complicated to keep track of all the endpoints and to um, see uh, let's say which applications uh, do that and which do not it's even worse that sometimes you confuse them with malware or adware as well. They just behave really shady and you end yeah. up diving really weird rabbit holes. Well, it's especially the case with the bear claw the thing that I showed that, uh, well, the checkpoint uh, researchers uh, called the clicker and they talk in depth about how this, uh, you know, uh, does uh, click fraud in essence. So, uh, it's kind of you know it's kind of borderline research and uh, as i was saying there's no strong laws that say or regulate uh, how this information can be collected stored transferred uh, and so on and the, there is also something else uh using the sdk in order to get some analytics about your users is something quite common when you develop an android application so there is a limit and the limit is difficult to uh, to draw on because you don't know uh, sometimes uh, uh, analytics company will get a lot of data in order to profile the user but uh, the amount of data is is quite big so some company as costing show are getting the location in order to sell a product behind that but sometimes it's just an analytics company which are giving the ability to the developer to to profile the user and to target uh, some news or some features some specific feature to their users so this is something quite common even in the development process for for an android developer mobile developers in, in general Absolutely, and actually I've seen uh, these apps uh, sending uh, kind of debug logs back uh, uh, to their developers. Uh, things like, you know, if they crash, if something unexpected happens, uh, there's uh, all these SDKs, such as one signal, I guess, that allows the uh, passing of uh, information from the app back to the developers uh, almost in real time. So yeah, not all of them do track your location, but I guess the ones that track your location are the most, let's say, uh, uh, opportunistic. And uh, well, obviously, like we just uh, saw in Gabriel's uh, presentation, location is not the only data that uh, can be also uh, exfiltrated. Like uh, uh, 
uh, you're saying like the browser history, like the music. Uh, actually, a quick question I just remembered uh, that was for Mazin in the chat. Uh, regarding the history, was it only if you're using the official web browser or also if you use like Chrome or Braver? They only did it using the browser that was prepackaged in, uh, in MIUI. Okay. So, uh, oh, and I forgot fun fact. It also happens on the browser that, uh, that they published on various stores as well. I see. And um, so speaking of uh, the different apps uh, you guys have been lo looked at, so uh, Gabriel and uh, Kostin, so you, you, you had the, the time to give a full presentation. Uh, but, uh, Baptist, uh, you, you have been uh, quite uh, popular in the Indian community uh, over the past uh, few weeks. Can you, uh, like, summarize uh, for us and our audience uh, what you have been, um, uh, like, this, uh, well, basically what uh, were your findings at what you did with uh, uh, our uh, Gear C2? I mean, I don't know if I'm pronouncing yeah. it right. Actually, someone in the chat was also asking about it. So, so India recently uh, published an a contact tracing application like many countries um, in order to fight COVID-19. And this application is getting regularly uh, the, the, Bluetooth, uh, the Bluetooth ID of people around you and also is getting the GPS location um, regularly. So, Two months ago, uh, just after the launch of the application, I decided to look at it. So I found the first uh, security issue, which was not a very big issue. I mean, between maybe low and medium. Uh, basically, a web view activity was exported. So it was possible for an external attacker to open this web view activity and to read the internal file uh, of the application. So they fix it in the, in the version just after uh, without any communication, they just fix it. And uh, recently, like one week ago or two weeks ago, I uh, looked back at the application and I found, so there is, a, there is a feature inside the application which gives the ability to the users to know how many people are infected by COVID-19 around you. So you have the ability to say, I want to know how many people are infected in a circle with the radius of uh, 500 meters, one kilometers, 10, uh, two, five of 10 kilometers. And this, uh, when I looked at these features, the, the, uh, the request made by the application, there was no restriction at all in the parameters. So you were able to set the location of your choice, but also you were able to, to, uh, to set the radius of the circle you want to look at to something very, very small, like uh, 100 meters. So it gives you the, the lack of uh, restriction and also the, the ability to, uh, to do a lot of requests gave, uh, gave me the ability to know who is uh, sick in this particular house, for example, or in this uh, in this famous places like the par parliament, uh, the Indian parliament, or the, the PMO, the prime minister office uh, in India. So I was able to see that, for example, two people were infected in the PM office, something like th something like that. So it was more a privacy issue. It was a way to abuse the functionality inside the application. Uh, so it was quite fun. I wrote a small write-up about it, and it, li it literally blew up. <laughs> so yeah, it was uh, the the communication phase, and uh, uh, I got a lot of new followers in India, a lot of comments, a lot of press release. So I try to do my best to explain what it is. And um, after that, I worked also on some, I worked also on some, um, on some dashboard because in India, they decided to release each cities decided to release uh, some maps 
with the location of people infected by COVID-19 with their personal data. So there is a big work in general uh, at the country level to, uh, to, to spread the, the message that privacy is important. If you are sick, you still have some rights. You still have the right to have a privacy. And uh, there is a medical secret in France, for example. And the, this secret is for good reason, uh, because if, for example, you uh, people around you know that you are infected by COVID-19, you can uh, the, uh, you can have some some discrimination. You can be discrimin uh, discriminate uh, because of your health status. Um, it's funny the, uh, mentioning, uh, just to jump on that, the, uh, uh, medical secret in France, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, when was that, they, weren't they giving like, uh, like 25 euros for like each people they would report, uh, back to the government, to, uh, medical doctors, to all the GPs in France. So the, uh, because even like Macron said, like, this is a, a sanitary uh, war. Yes. So uh, that's this, like a question mark around the medical secret. Uh, no, I guess. This is, this is quite a big topic. And this is, uh, this is why there is a odd debate around the contact tracing in general, uh, mobile uh, contact tracing application, but also manual contact tracing, because in order to fight a pandemic, you need to trace the contact of infected people. And in order to trace the contacts, you need to uh, uh, you need to go inside this privacy. And for example, in Taiwan, if I remember correctly, they decided to look at the bank accounts. They decided to look at the CCTV or at the phone records in order to know exactly where you want the last 14 days. So it's in France, we as a government try to do something in the middle. Uh, but yes, it's a violation of the medical secret because if doctors uh, send to a non-health professional uh, some personal data, it's a little bit complicated and it's, I don't think it's quite legal. Just a quick question for the Indian app, uh, since you had a, 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 a good uh, deep dive in it, how many users, how many people installed the app? Uh, uh, 100 millions at this time. 100 million? Yes, but this is, uh, uh, it was mandatory uh, yeah. for the last uh, weeks and uh, they decided to step back a little bit because it was not even legal uh, in India. And now it's, uh, it's advice. Uh, it's strongly advised to install the application, but you yeah. still have some services uh, where you are forced to use uh, the application and to install the application. For example, if you want to go into a train, you need to have the application. Uh, yeah, I think there's is a bunch of countries where it's uh, mandatory, but was it mandatory if you are tested positive or mandatory period? Uh, period. Oh, okay. Uh, what about you guys? Have you, like, do you guys know how many countries have a tracing app for like uh, COVID-19 now? Or? Well, I, I looked a bit in this uh, issue with this topic, and um, there's a, I guess there's a decent number of these apps. So there's a list on uh, Wikipedia, right? There's a few other resources um, that I've seen, and uh, I think that maybe even Baptiste put together a list uh, himself that I have seen. Um, um, it's quite interesting. There's a large variety. Some are mandatory, some are optional. For some countries, there's even two different apps, uh, right, per region. Um, perhaps uh, maybe even Baptiste wants to to share his thoughts uh, about this. Yes. I, so I made a list on GitHub where you can, so there is a repo where you can you can find all the contact tracing application I found all over the world. And as Kostin said, um, some, in some countries, uh, you have two, you have two application. 
for example, in Spain, you have one application for Madrid and you have one for Catalonia. Uh, uh, in Italy, uh, it was the same thing. You, you had multiple applications at the beginning. Uh, in some countries, this is mandatory. I think it, uh, in Qatar recently, like two days ago, uh, they made the application mandatory in India, as we said, uh, but in a lot of Euro European countries, uh, this is optional. And in the US, uh, they released an application quite recently too. So we can see a lot of uh, initiative, a lot of new application made by the governments all over the world, uh, they all made different choices. In your, even in Europe, they didn't manage to uh, to do the same thing and to use the same protocols. There is a odd debate in uh, in France, especially uh, whether we have to use uh, a centralized protocol or a decentralized protocol. What is the best uh, in terms of privacy? So. This is, for, in my opinion, this is the biggest issue. Uh, we will see a lot of new application. Uh, all these application will be different and uh, they will, all the government will try to use the legal system, their legal system in order to, uh, to enforce the use of uh, this application. And some of these apps are not really privacy friendly. So we have to be, to, to be careful and to to expose what these contact tracing application are really doing. And um, so, based on uh, your observation, uh, since like the the pandemic started, I guess it has been a few months now. Uh, do you think like contact tracing uh, as an app is useful, or what do you uh, do, what type of like results do you think uh, governments are getting out of it? Because from one aspect you know like if you feel like they need to have an app to like keep track of uh you know data you know when we know they're just struggling to get their own numbers like from hospitals and stuff you know and then suddenly like they expect an app is going to do it is it really useful for governments is it really useful for people clearly um this is uh, this is not really useful at the moment. At the moment, we cannot prove uh, a, a mobile contact uh, tracing application is really useful uh, because this is something quite new. Uh, so we are uh, all the government are doing that for good reason. They are, they are trying to. Um, to do something and they don't want uh, people to say, okay, you had the ability to create an application to, to fight the pandemic and you did nothing. So they want to do something to do something. And uh, as we can see, for example, in Iceland, um, say 40% uh, uh, of the population installed the application and uh, the top official uh, responsible of the contact tracers uh, teams said the application was not really useful. Um, for example, in France also, uh, we are quite sure that we will never have this level of adoption. Maybe the, the estimation we have, we will have maybe uh, five, between 5% five or 10% or of the popul population uh, uh, with the application installed and we know that with this level uh, the application is not that useful. Uh, this is the same thing in Sing Singapore. Singapore is an Iceland uh, with a small population and even, even with this configuration they didn't uh, manage to, uh, to, to use the application to fight the pandemic and they were forced to, uh, to declare a lockdown so everybody everyone is quite agree on the fact that today this is not magic uh it's not really useful it's creating new issues for example in australia uh they uh i think it was two days ago also they said they were enabled to integrate the data the contact tra tracer were, were enabled to use the data from the application because there were uh there is a integration issue so this new tool is not really helping the real professionals the contact tracers so in my opinion we need to put some effort on 
giving the tools to the contact tracer, to the health professionals, and uh, forget a little bit about this magical application. So I guess question for all of you, is there like a way to preserve, uh, 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 is privacy um, still possible with uh, contact tracing uh, protocols? Or do they have uh, some type of like identifiable uh, data that could be like released, like uh, Gabriel was saying before with Xiaomi, like this is unique code, for instance, that gets uh, released and it's quite easy to correlate uh, data with each other or like even metadata, uh, which I guess for like most of the general public, you know, they would, uh, if you tell them, oh, it's anonymized uh, ID, they would be like, okay, whereas in fact it can be like easily. Uh, identifiable and especially with tracing because it's all your location or, or where all the, all the people you have seen where you have been um, so what do you think of like privacy in that scenario and also from the apps you have seen that are claiming uh, that uh, privacy is uh, definitely uh, respected I think it pretty much depends on the efforts that somebody wants to put into just unraveling whatever type of, uh, I don't know, scheme the entity that stores the data used in order to anonymize all of that. Just like a lockpick, there's no such thing as a perfect lock. The effort is what matters. There, there is also an important point um, to to say. Uh, in Europe, for example, uh, very uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of um, researcher. Uh, from universities all, all over Europe decided to work on the new contact tracing application protocol uh, with privacy, uh, privacy in mind. And even with their effort, uh, these guys are very, very good and they created the protocol. They did the, their best, but even with uh, with this amount of skills, uh, time and effort, we can see that their protocol has some limitation. And as I said before, there is a odd debate between centralized uh, or decentralized protocols. And we can see that in both uh, protocols, there is there, there is some limitation in terms of privacy and nothing is really perfect. And this is the core of the issue. Uh, we are fighting a pandemic and we, in order to try, in order to fight this pandemic, we are trying to put uh, technology as a solution and uh, preserved the privacy. Uh, it's a little bit complicated because at the end of the, uh, of the journey, you want to uh, you want to go to the doctor. You need, you need to go to the doctor. You need to be uh, cured by someone. So you need the identity of the infected people in order to say, okay, you have to stay home. So this is a human issue, and we need to, uh, we need to to have to enforce the human relations. Uh, in my opinion, uh, and uh, privacy cannot really be. Uh, protected uh, if we use the technology to fight the pandemic. And uh, what about Singapore, for instance, because uh, they tried different things, right? They have these uh, app like Trace Together that they claimed they would uh, open source it. I don't know if they ended up doing it. They uh, did. Yeah. They did. So has any other government used it? And has the Singapore like experience been uh, successful? Because I've seen even in China, like now, they detected new cases. Uh, so they're doing the confinement and uh, 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 again, and out of all the countries doing like uh, any like tracing or surveillance, you'd expect China to be like uh, using like the uh, like latest state of art, you know, like uh, in, in that term. So. 
like is there any experience that has been successful so far or like Costin maybe have you uh, what have you seen then uh, otherwise I feel like uh, uh, Baptiste is gonna answer to all the questions and uh, <laughs> then you guys well, gonna uh, become shy <laughs> no not at all uh I it's it's hard to say. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But uh, I was thinking about something I've seen in the chat. Uh, Veronique uh, was saying that uh, in the European Union we have strict data protection laws uh, that requires people's consent uh, before being tracked. And this actually reminds me of an interesting story from a few days ago. I got an, uh, a message from my uh, mobile company saying that uh, we just want to let you know that we will be sharing information, tracking information, which includes uh, uh, metadata produced by your smartphone, such as location, amount of traffic, uh, and so on, uh, with uh, different entities, including the European Commission. Uh, it was just like a notification, just so you know. Uh, and at the very end, there was also a, a small note saying, but by the way, if you don't like it, you can write us a message and uh, we will uh, remove your data from this uh, aggregated telemetry that we will be sending over. And uh, it, it turns out that actually uh, the European Commission has been reaching out to different big uh, GSM operators in all European Union countries, one operator per country, asking them for such information. So uh, many have been actually complaining exactly as Veronique is saying uh, um, that uh, there's no legal framework for the European Commission to ask for this information. And like, what is the basis of this request? Um, to be honest, I don't know the answer to that. What I know is that for sure, uh, telcos are actually compiling, aggregating all this information. They, they are preparing to send it over uh, basically just uh, notification that the data will go. It's not like, can we send your data? No, it's your data will go and just FYI. And if you don't like that, uh, let us know. To be honest, I, I did write them an email and ask to be kept out of this metadata collection. And surprisingly, I got the reply. They even called and said that uh, they will not use my data. So hopefully, but I guess that all these uh, uh, frameworks and strict data protection rules, sometimes they can bend or twist, especially at the times of pandemics. And uh, what, what about uh, you, Gabriel? Have you seen uh, uh, vendors or do you think that would be uh... And uh, like a possibility that vendors like Xiaomi would use the actual data that they already already have to do like such uh, tracing instead of uh, asking people to install a new app. Uh, that I do not know. It's may I guess it's it mostly depends on where they store the data and what kind of uh, laws and uh, jurisdictions with the, the governments have over there. Mm. But if you think about it, they have data. I mean, in India, at least, they have 25% of the market share. I haven't seen them exfiltrating any kind of uh, GPS uh, info. So this might be not that useful when it comes to doing any kind of contact tracing. The information that I the aggregate is more, let's say, commercial in nature yeah it would be interesting to see actually for the data that uh, apps are collecting now if they can uh, uh, actually reuse it and uh, resell it for later on uh, because do, do you guys have seen you know remember like when EFF did like uh, this grid of like oh like what uh, messenger application you should be using and what do uh, what protection do you have when you don't have have you guys seen any like matrix of all those apps to see what kind of data is being collected by each of them as a matrix that would be quite a cool thing actually because you could see well what's the baseline or benchmark for data being collected and uh, if a country is collecting more data than another and if they could actually use that for like uh for other things 
I don't think uh, I didn't see it on my side, but we should do it definitely. Yeah. Cool. Uh, actually, a question for you, uh, Baptiste, <laughs> from. Uh, <laughs> there's uh there's like few uh, few indian guys uh, in, in the chat now they're quite uh quite uh, excited to ask you a question so the first one which uh, you don't have to answer is what's your advice should indians uh, keep uh aragoya setu or uninstall it and the second question is uh ask uh, elliot about the open source mode of uh, arogia uh, that he was once asked to develop he um, install or not the application is quite a big question on the, I mean, you, you have to do this choice and this is your, this is a personal choice. So if you are okay to give a part of your privacy in exchange of some potential protection, uh, do it. I mean, you can install the application, but you have to know that this application is tracking the uh, the people you are meeting all the day and also uh, it's getting your GPS location. So if uh, at one point you are infected by, the, by COVID-19, the government will have all your data. So you know what is in the balance and you, you have to decide, decide yourself. And regarding the second question for uh, a mod of the application. This is quite, an, for me, it's uh, it was a big eti ethical question. Uh, we have, as an engineer, as an Android developer, we have uh, we have the ability to create to modify a contact tracing application in order to remove all the privacy and invas invasive features of the application. So should we do it it's not because we have the ability to do it when we have the skills to do it we have to do it i decided on my side to not do it on on to not do a tutorial on how to do it uh, because i think uh, potentially uh, it will create it um, too much alternative and it will spread the wrong message i prefer to say to people don't use it if you don't want to use it use it if you want to use it but uh, creating a, a modified version is not it's quite cool on, on the paper but in reality i don't think it will be a, a good thing and uh because uh, this is live and for people who are watching the replay at least there's uh, an interesting proof of it do you guys remember when a bunch of government asked uh, apple and google to like uh, create some modification that they could use uh even france actually was one of those governments because people are like well you guys are doing gdpr and then you find us and now you're asking us to modify our apis uh to uh, to like accommodate to your tracing uh, feature request, so I'm just gonna show it on the screen now. Uh, but Sima just sent me like this uh, this link, uh, which is uh, pretty interesting. So someone just tweeted uh, 30 minutes ago, so at the time that uh, this is happening, a new update on uh, iOS uh, 13.5 which apparently has uh, support for COVID-19 contact tracing apps uh, from public uh, health authorities. Uh, I well, I don't know if you guys have had time to see it, but uh, that's... Uh, yeah, that's seen that. You did? Alex, uh, Alex Temos uh, tweeted about it, right? Uh, the tweet I have is from uh, Mike Murphy, actually. Um, yeah, any, any comments on that, uh, Kostin, since you saw the tweet? <laughs> Well, it seemed uh, interesting, especially since we, we knew that this was coming for some time. And actually, um, today I was looking at the guidelines for the creation of these apps. So um, actually, um, I, I got to say that the guidelines um, actually looked uh, pretty good in the sense that um, um, there's only one application allowed per country, so they're not going to allow things like two applications per country. There should be just one that uses these uh, features. And uh, the most important one, in my opinion, was that um, all these uh, COVID-19 apps that use this uh, API 
they're not allowed to use location uh, tracking. So they're not allowed to access your location. Very simple rule. So that means that these apps cannot track your movements around. That's uh, not uh, allowed by the policy. And of course, uh, this uses other things like Bluetooth, right? Uh, low power Bluetooth. Uh, and uh, that's absolutely, let's say, OK. Uh, but it seemed to me that was very nice uh, that it's forbidden to collect the location. And uh, what about you, Baptiste and uh, Gabriel? Uh, I, I don't know if you had time to, uh, to watch the specs, obviously, since it just got released. Uh, but any idea of what we can expect from that and uh, what that's for the iOS uh, release? So I guess the uh, Google one is going to be uh, released uh, soon. The, uh, the Google one has been already released, as far as oh, I, I know. Uh, yes, I think it's already open source on GitHub. So you, you can find the, the sources on the what the protocol chose by Apple and Google is in reality um, derivated from the European uh, decentralized protocol created by some universities and it's called uh, it's coming from DP uh, from a protocol called uh, DP free tea and this uh, protocol is quite good in my opinion this is the best protocol we have on the table at this moment uh, but as I said before, this is not perfect. There is some limitations. And if you go to the to the DP3T uh, GitHub uh, repo, you would see that there is some issues opened, uh, some some uh, some good issues, and uh, they did a great job trying to document uh, to to write down all the limitations and to explain what is wrong with their pro proposition. But at this moment, we don't really have a better uh, option. And this is why uh, Google and Apple try to, uh, to uh, this is why they took this proposition uh, package that with the Apple and protocol experience, let's, let's say it like this. And uh, they only, uh, what they did is quite clever because they only proposed to, uh, governments an API so they cannot uh, they are not responsible of the applications uh, itself so I mean this is in my for me it's quite okay uh, this is a good proposition with some limitations it's not perfect but this is the best thing we have at the moment and uh, so there is multiple protocol. The one you just mentioned is, uh, what did you say, DT3T? No. Uh, yes. DP3T, yeah. And uh, how many protocols are like uh, currently uh, out there? DP3T, yeah. You have like, uh, you have, I think, uh, you have two big, uh, two big protocols in, in Europe. You have the Robert protocol, uh, which is the French proposition. And also you have uh, this, As this one, the DP, <laughs> the <laughs> DP free tea, uh, uh, protocol. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, well, I guess we're reaching the end of uh, this panel. I don't see uh, any more questions uh, in the chat either. Uh, so yeah like uh, uh thanks uh for joining us for this panel and to giving uh uh all the three of you uh your your thoughts and uh, insight on the current uh, tracing and uh like uh, tra tracking um well uh apps and uh things that being out there obviously like uh, covid 19 is one of the big one but like we've seen in the keynote of gabriel that's not the only way uh to be uh, tracked uh well uh thanks to you guys and uh thanks yeah hope to see you soon and uh, thank you, thank you.